recognized. In those circumstances, we would submit it is clear that there are any aliens. A apart from the question of whether they had the right to apply for Croatian citizenship, and I'm not going to speak here about my own knowledge of what in fact happened subsequent to the armed conflict for, for those that wanted to acquire Croatian citizenship. But the Eritrea-Ethiopia case uh, is actually uh, far less forceful than this case because those that were lawfully expelled were in fact dual citizens. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not now asking you to compare them because um, that's the case you mentioned to me. You referred to a lot of things, you referred to that case in your oral argument. Uh, I was just wondering whether the reference to that case, to Lauter Park, which is of course already 14 years ago, that uh, whether that would be the guiding principles, but you say this case is even stronger, that's clear. Um, then finally, um, one question for Mr. Mikulicic. Mr. Mikulicic, you, um, when arguing the um, the jurisdiction um, you said the following um, thing you were talking about armed conflict you said, as a matter of fact, in these cases, um, and you had referred to the IRA and the ETA, um, they had a rather good hierarchical organization. In some cases, they even controlled parts of that territory. That is to say, that there were some elements that could meet the criteria of customary international law that are applied for defining armed conflict. And then you said, however, that never happened, and no international court ever established jurisdiction, which was then followed by any jurisdiction of national courts was never brought into question. Your last remark suggests that if there's an armed conflict, that national courts will, would lose their jurisdiction uh, because national courts and that's my question to you, can exercise their jurisdiction whether there exists or does not exist an armed conflict, of course, depending on the kind of cases they are dealing with, but that could include war crimes or crimes against humanity. Would you agree with that, or would you further explain what the last part of this sentence, jurisdiction of national court, was never brought into question uh, what exactly uh, means in this context. Indeed, Your Honor, I completely agree with your position, and that was not my intention to uh, provoke the, that question. It is obviously that national courts has jurisdictions, and no matter whether it is a context of the armed conflict or it's not. In fact, if the national courts did a duty in the very present case, I suppose we wouldn't be here today. Thank you for this clarification. Um, we will conclude here in this case at this moment. I wanted to join in the appreciation expression by the parties already for the work done by all those who have assisted us, interpreters, technicians, transcribers, and registry have all 
made it possible to hear this case which kept us for quite a while in this and other courtrooms. I want to extend also on behalf of the Chamber my appreciation to the parties because a Chamber is limping and paralyzed if it's not assisted by committed and dedicated parties which present their cases before the Chamber. It is to a large extent also <coughs> because of the parties that the Chamber can perform its duties. And I would like to express my appreciation for that very specifically. Um, I will adjourn in a minute. The Chamber is aware that there is a pending motion by the Court of Honor Defense which doesn't need an immediate answer now. It will, from what will follow, it will, it can be concluded whether or not the Chamber has granted or has not granted that motion. Um, the Chamber adjourns senior DA and will deliver its judgment in due course. And the chair. All right, we will do it. Thank you.